and having a lot of seams when you're hand sewing is really not going to be to your benefit. It's not going to, it's not going to speed. Whoops. Hi, welcome back to Live Deep. And I am here with your uh, sewing tutorial for the um, mask for a nurse, uh, by, a nur by a nurse for a nurse. Um, that's the Instructables, uh, the Instructables pattern. If you printed it, you've needed to modify it. If you didn't have a printer, we've I've talked you through how to uh, how to hand draw it. So you've got your pattern, you've cut it out, you've cut your fabric. Um, there's a tutorial for that one as well. So now we're going to start working on how to actually do the project. And I've had to think about this a lot because this this project has a lot of seams. And while I was hand sewing some of the seams for the other uh, mask that I was talking folks through, um, it occurred to me that there's a lot of seams in this in this mask. And having a lot of seams uh, when you're hand sewing is not gonna be very fast. And I don't want you to uh, just lose your mind trying to work on this. So um, I've tried to pare it down to just the most necessary seams. And so we're gonna do as much with our seams as we can. Your seams are gonna have to be uh, good and strong. And you're gonna have to you know, work on those. We'll talk about how to do your hand stitched seams uh, using a technique called back stitching. If I don't describe it for you well enough here, use the term and go look up diagrams and things like that on Google. Um, I'm gonna try to show you, but I have limited camera capacity capabilities here. So um, I'm gonna put this uh, down and we're gonna get started. So the first thing that I want to tell you is that I had you cut it. <laughs> Don't be mad at me. I had you cut it and we actually need to trim it back just a little bit. Um, the way that she has you do it, she has you sew a half inch seam and then trim the seams down by a quarter of an inch. And I didn't have uh, my thinking cap on earlier when I had us cut it uh, the regular size. I didn't really, I hadn't thought this far ahead about what size we were going to do it. So before I cut this down, these pattern marks are important. And so I'm going to extend them so that when I cut off my quarter inch, they will still be there. Now, if you need to measure yourself out a quarter of an inch and do all of that, then go ahead. Um, you can just take your ruler. You can get back out your straight edge. You can do a couple of quarter inch bits here. Um, draw a little line, maybe. Yours, um, by measuring it and changing it, do that. If you want to just go by hand because you, if you want to just, you know, uh, work it out, then just work it out. Now hold, make sure that you're holding all of your layers together here and you're cutting everything together like I just didn't. See, because it's pretty easy to not to. I'm going to grab some more binder clips and clip this a little bit better. Um, this is where pins would come in handy if you have them. So if you've got them, use them. If you don't, that's okay. Um, so I'm going to trim off my quarter inch here. Okay, we're back. I did cut a quarter of an inch off of this. I, and I only cut this side, the back, and the top. So the bottom, the side, and the top, you don't cut along the fold. Not at all. I put some thought into the material that I'm asking you guys to use and thought about what I could use to help finish these seams the best we possibly can without having you have to try to invent some bias tape and all sorts of other things that are challenging. So here's my pillowcase, okay? Here's the opening for my pillowcase. And the opening of every pillowcase has this little fold over here. I'm counting on yours having that. So your pillowcase, you're gonna cut it. We're gonna, I'm gonna fold it up. 
and then I'm going to measure in an inch. from this fold right here. See this piece of the pillowcase, that opening? I'm gonna measure in an inch from there. Now, mine has this lovely pattern and actually I'll be able to just follow because of where the pattern is. See my inch is right there. So I can just sort of use the top of this row as my cutting guide and I'm just going to follow along and check it and make sure that that's the case all the way across and I'm just going to cut both sides of the pillowcase all at once so I'm going to check it there's an inch an inch I'm feeling pretty good about this some pillowcases aren't put together I mean like it might be off a little bit or maybe it's gotten you know, put through the wash too many times and it came out wrinkled or whatever. So double check that the edge um, is straight. And, and when you've got it figured out, if there's something visual that you can do to help you uh, mark an inch in, then do that. If there's not, then just do what I was just doing and take your measure, take your, take your measurement and mark it. And make sure that both sides are even out with each other. You don't want this because then this side will be off a little bit. So get them as close to lined up as you can. Make sure that the bottom is lined up with the top layer of your pillowcase. And then you're going to start cutting. And I'm going to be confident that right there is an inch. And I had to trade. Like I said, I had to trade out of my other scissors just for y'all's sake so that you didn't have to watch me try to do it with scissors that weren't sharp enough. Okay. So there we go. Now, when we take this, the top of the pillowcase, but if you can look at it, you can open it up and it opens up to this almost a bias tape. Uh, so now we've got that and we've got this and we've cut this up or uh, we've cut it down by a quarter of an inch on three sides. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to unpin this and I'm going to open it. Okay. Now the nurse who wrote these instructions was really clear that she wanted there to be the front side should have the, the pattern of the fabric and the back side should not. And that, that way, um, you know automatically if you're looking at the front of the back of the mask. So we're going to stack our pieces of fabric on top of each other, one on top of the other with the, with the pattern side of the fabric facing up. We are going to um, then mark it. I'm going to turn it over. It's easier to see the markings on the back of the fabric. So when I mark a pleat, I like to just fold it, fold the paper, um, the pattern right there, and I'm going to fold the pleat here. And then I'm just going to take my colored pencil. You could use a piece of chalk if you wanted, or a grease pen, or a Sharpie marker, or whatever you've got, and you're just going to follow that line down, okay? There it is. And your darts are marked. And then we're going to mark these pleats. Here we go. We're going to go here and here, here and here, here and here. Okay. Then on the other side, so that you can see where they're marked, I just hold them right next to each other. So I'm going to mark these here and here, here and here here and here and then we're just going to fold these okay and we're going to fold them down each set has has a top and bottom uh pleat mark so we're going to fold down 
at the bottom of the pleat mark on the set and we're just going to use our fingers and smash it okay and then we're going to fold it back up at the top pleat mark and we're going to use our fingers again and smash it okay and then i'm going to use you can use a staple i'm going to use a binder clip Okay, now she, in her pattern, she would already have you have sewn uh, a half inch seam all the way around this. And um, I'm being really careful not to scooch them off of each other, the, the sheets of fabric. If you want, if you're having trouble with this, maybe put some um, staples here. I'll do it. <clears throat> you can just put some staples along the bottom. My red stapler from when I had an office job. So we're just going to do this to hold the layers together. Okay. There you go. All right. Now, again, we're going to look at the set. You can't see it. That's bothering me a lot. Um, There's the bottom. It looks, I think it might look like the top to y'all. Um, but there's the bottom of the of the pleat set. And then here's the top. So I'm gonna fold, it's reversed. I'm so sorry. I'm gonna fold down at the bottom one. And again, I'm just gonna smush it with my fingers. And then I'm gonna fold back up at the top one. And now the pointy part of the of the whole thing is the top. That is the nose. So all of your pleats need to go the same direction. Otherwise, you're going to decrease the amount of space um, instead of increasing, I believe. So I'm just going to, when I've got this second pleat done, I'm just going to move my binder clip to grab both of them. So now I've done this one. Okay. All right. And I'm going to do it one more time for the bottom, for the last, uh, for the last one. I'm going to go down. And I'm going to run a line with my fingers. And then I'm going to fold back up. Okay. I'm going to use a second binder clip here. To grab this. Okay. Same here. I already did it. And so it's just going to go right back where I asked it to go the first time. And I'm going to hold it there. Okay. Now, from one end to the other here, with my pleats put in, should be about three inches. So I'm going to measure that and see if I've got it about right. That's like two and a half. That's a little bit small. I want to have it a little bit bigger. So I'm going to ease off on some of my pleats a little bit, make them a little less big. Oh, I think that bottom one was the problem. I think I had it too small or too large, I mean. So this should be about three inches. Okay, so we're about there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my stapler and I'm going to, and I'm going to staple. Oh, and you can see, see how this is already starting to fray here? So your fabric could could fray pretty easy on you. I'm going to take my stapler in some and I'm not going to do this right next to the edge. I'm coming in a good more than an inch. Um, 
And then I'm going to do the same for these two as well. Okay. So there I've stapled that. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to leave, I'm going to go ahead and staple the other side as well. Here we go. Okay. Now I have this piece that I just cut off the pillowcase with y'all. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and open it up. And right at the seam, right at the seam where it was sewn together, I'm just going to clip it. Okay. Then I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it over this part of my mask. I'm going to fold it in. Use my fingers to press it. This fabric is not taking this uh, very well. This uh, this trying to push in um, the uh, the seams. If you have an iron, this would work way better if you were using an iron. Um, I just did that pretty good with my fingernail though. So if you can rub on it, get it to take this, the press a little bit. So you're going to fold it from the outside. You're going to fold in to that center fold that it already had, that it came with. And in this way, you're kind of making your own bias tape, actually. Um, so we're doing this. All right. Now we're going to take the first three inches of that, and we're just going to sandwich this into it. Okay. Here we go. I'm going to grab it in a binder clip here. And I'm going to grab this in a binder clip over here. And I'm going to cut it. There we go. Now we're going to work on back stitching. And I really hate the light that I've got for this right now. The sun uh, is moving on me and I'm in a room full of windows. So it's kind of a challenge. Oh. Uh, so I'm just going to come up through here. I'm going to get all my layers all at the same shot. I'm going to come here. And I'm going to get through all those layers at once. And I'm going to pull it through. I'm going to leave you to thread your own needle. That can take a lot of tries just for the first time, just so you know. If you're very first time threading a needle, it can take you a lot of tries. So what you're going to do is you're going to start by doing a couple of different back stitches, a couple of extra back stitches to start your seam, and then you'll go on. So we're going to go in through the back, we're going to come out, just, we're going to take little bitty, little bitty stitches, okay? And you can just take this piece here and just sort of hold it, this little piece that's sticking out. Now, instead of, normally you would just continue on, right? You would just go forward with your stitching, but back stitching means that we're going to see where we came out. We're going to go in back behind that again. So where you came out, you're going to go back in behind it. All right. And then you're going to come out <clears throat> just a little bit. Right now, we're just going to do a stationary one, which means that we're going to do a couple of times through right about the same hole. And we're not going to move our stitching forward. We're going to just... Oops, I went around it. You shouldn't go around it. Don't do that. Instead, you should go. No, I didn't go around it. Just kidding. I lied. So you're going to go back in behind again and then come back out here at the front again. And you're just, you're going to make a tack is what this is called. And it's going to be a nice, strong start to your seam. 
and you can even go through that tack sideways a little bit um, just to sort of like make a knot as you're going along. Okay, there you go. Now let's move this seam forward. We're going to come forward a stitch. Okay. And then we're going to come back some. We're going to come out behind where we just went through. So our next stitch is going to go behind where our next stitch, where our previous stitch went in. I don't know if you can see this. It's kind of hard to see. So you're going to go out and go. So you're covering the same territory multiple times. You're going to go out before where your stitch came out last time. And then you're going to go back in just slightly in front of where your stitch came out last or went in last time. So it's kind of slow going, especially because you're not just, you know, plowing through this, but you're going to end up with a nice strong seam that's going to hold really well. So moving forward and then back. You're going to come up behind where you just went in and pick your stitches carefully. Um, I know you want to be quick, but you also, you know, want this done well enough that it will hold together. Okay. So I am actually going to go finish this up on the sewing machine real quick so that I can get you through to the next, um, stage of it. Ugh. Okay. I give. Y'all go look up back stitching. I'm going to go do, uh, I'm going to go run this through on the sewing machine and come back and show you um, how to do the rest of it. Here I go. Okay. I am back. I did the stitching on these two side pieces. And this is going to hold those pleats in place. Now, before I go on, I am going to take the staples out. You can just pinch the fabric and it'll get the staples most of the way out. You might have to stretch them out a little bit and pull them out. But um, go ahead and take those staples out. And then we're going to put in our, our darts. So this is going to help... Uh, give form to your mask. So you're going to take these two pieces at the back here and line them up. And then when you've stretched the whole thing out, um, we're going to, we've already marked the darts. So now we just need to sew them. So what you're going to do is you're going to um, fold it in half and you're just going to sew along this line right here and sew it twice. That way it won't pop out, okay? And then you're going to do the same for this one down here that you marked. And you're just going to sew it from the center line to the edge and then again, okay? I'm going to go do that right now on my machine so that I can get this video out for y'all. Okay, so I've just sewn the darts and I did sew them twice with my machine. Um, just going up and then back. Now, when we turn that right side out, it's going to look like this. So it kind of has some really good structure and form here. Now, I'm not going to cut these. Often you do, but if you don't cut them, if anything happens to your stitching, then you won't be end up, you won't end up with it just hanging open. So remember this strip of, uh, pillowcase. We're going to go back and we're going to sandwich it. We're going to sandwich it on top of these. Okay. Oh, here, let me trim this off because that's kind of sticking off all weird. And let me trim up this side. Okay. All right. And that side was already pretty good. So then I'm going to take this again and I'm going to 
fold it over. Again, if you have an iron, please use it here because it will make your life easier. I'm going on the assumption that you don't. And so I'm just going to show you how to finger press is what we call this. You're just going to take it and go into that fold in the center and finger press all the way across. Now, same for the top of it. You're going to come to the center and finger press all the way across. It works well if you just use your fingernail or like maybe slide a penny over it. Something to really firm up those, uh, those folds. So now you're going to take this and you're going to take the end of it and fold it in and run your finger there. Okay, now that's going to go here at the very edge of your mask. See, there's your mask. And then you're going to start, you're going to fold it down and fold this side down. And then you're going to use that and you're just going to grab this corner here. And maybe right as soon as you get it, put on a binder clip. Definitely don't staple that one just yet because we're going to take it and uh, tuck in some ribbon as well. So we're going to go all along, just fold it over and grab this. And you can staple it if you want to hold it in place while you run your seam. I am actually going to use a pin because I'm trying to hurry up and get done with this uh, process so that I can get it posted up for, for you on YouTube. Um, sorry I didn't get this out while you had a weekend. Hopefully some of y'all will have some evening time that you can spend on this. Okay. And then again, I'm just, I'm just coaxing that fold in and then here. Folding it in and then grabbing here. And we're just going to come all the way out to here. I'm going to pin. See how I'm holding it like the letter C? That makes it really easy to pin and have it tight and lined up well. So I'm going to go a little bit beyond here and cut. And then we're going to fold it back. And we're going to bring it in here and fold this and fold this and there we go okay and then I'm gonna do again a binder clip there I'm gonna the, the top gets done this other side gets done the same way I'm not gonna do it for you for the sake of you've already watched me for so dang long um, I'm gonna take a piece of ribbon 13 inches I'm gonna tie one end of it That's going to keep it from uh, fraying. This is where you could use your shoelaces. If all you got is a shoelace, take them out, cut them in half, and put half a shoelace here from one shoe, half a shoelace here from the other shoe. And then on the bottom side, do half a shoelace here and half a shoelace here. I'm using ribbon so that I don't actually have to cut up my kids' shoes. So here we go. All right, then we're going to open up that binder clip and on the back side of the mask, we're just going to tuck this in, tuck. We're going to open up this binder clip and on the back side of the mask, we're going to tuck this in. Give yourself some good amount of ribbon to tuck in there, okay? And when you sew your seams, you're going to sew a whole bunch of extra you're going to you're going to back stitch all along here um, along the edge in between the two pieces of fabric you're going to back stitch here and you're going to make it through all of these layers of fabric be really careful that you get all of the fabric every time but when you get to the ribbons 
you're going to sew like up and down and maybe an X shape over top of the ends of ribbons that are tucked in there because that's going to give them the strength and durability when you pull on them that they won't go flying out. I'm going to go sew mine and I'm going to do the top and then I'm going to do the bottom as well. And so we'll come back and see what the finished mask looks like. Okay. I've gone ahead and finished this out. I've sewn both of the uh, seams or I've sewn this, the fabric along both the top and bottom. And here is an example of uh, that stitch that I was telling you about um, where you would need to do like an X shape to keep the ribbon from pulling out. So there you go. And um, that's what your mask is going to look like. So when we put that on, there you go. All right. So thank you so much. Uh, I hope it went well. Good luck. Go make another one. Thanks.